Sports cars have traditionally been small, two-seaters with low weight and excitable performance. Fitted with motors capable of quick acceleration and above legal speeds, they're meant to encourage spirited driving and a sense of occasion whenever the key is turned. Nowhere in the definition is it thought that a sports car is economical, light on fuel, cheap to run. That is reserved for eco-friendly hatches and small sedans. With the surmounting pressure from a decaying ecosystem, BMW has attempted to marry low emissions, frugal fuel consumption and hybrid technology with their latest plug-in hybrid, the i8. BMW wants to prove that a sports car can successfully be married with green hybrid technology. The concept isn't new and the BMW i8 eDrive certainly isn't the only hybrid out on the market. You've got quite a few to choose from. What it is, is important. BMW wanted to show us that the sports car can be married with hybrid technology and successfully too. The R8 has two motors. Up front, you've got an electric motor. This produces 96 kilowatts and 250 newton meters of torque. It's powered by a bank of batteries that sit here in what would be a transmission tunnel. At the rear, you've got a petrol motor, a 1.5 liter, three cylinder turbocharged petrol motor. Makes 170 kilowatts, 320 newton meters of torque. Pretty much the same as what you're gonna get in a mini John Cooper works. Now combined, they're going to give you 266 kilowatts, 570 newton meters of torque. Because of the way that it delivers the power, the transition is almost seamless and the power is so linear, it just accelerates so smooth. And then there's a the throttle response and it's quite responsive, especially under electric power, where any sort of prod of the accelerator is going to get it going quite quickly I might add. Now you've got three different modes. You put it in max e drive and that's going to give you limited electric power and a limited speed of 120 kilometers an hour but it's just going to use the electric motor not a single drop of fossil fuel gets used. Now this naturally depletes the battery and you've got a range of about 32 kilometers on a full charge. A full charge is going to take a while you can charge it at home three hours is going to give you about 80 percent charge. Now it is a little unsettling, you put it in the max e-drive mode and you pull away and it's got this silent sci-fi sort of hum to it. Quite unsettling at first, but this is the future of sports cars, this is the future of motoring. You then have the standard e-drive mode which is what fires up as soon as you start the vehicle. Now that uses a combination of the petrol motor and the electric motor. The petrol motor is used for acceleration. But if you're cruising along, it switches over to the electric motor. So you'll use a small amount of petrol, but you'll use some battery power as well. It's quite an efficient way of going about things. Then you get sport mode. And that's now the heart of the sports car here. Because in sport mode, it fires up that petrol motor. And that's going to give you the acceleration. As soon as it hits higher up in the rev range, then the electric motor assists. That gives you the full 266 kilowatts and 570 newton meters of torque and it makes it all wheel drive. In the max eco mode, it's only front wheel drive. So it's a fantastic mix of economy and performance. Now the fascinating thing for me is that the petrol motor charges the batteries when you're driving in sport mode but not giving it the full beams. And you can drive along for a while and it'll charge up that battery, give you 20, 25 kilometers. You then switch it over into max E drive and everything becomes quiet and you can do 120 kilometers an hour, but then you're traveling with the energy that you generated those past couple of kilometers and you're not using an, a, a drop of fuel. Oh, the BMW i8 is not perfect, not by a long stretch of the imagination. 
it has its flaws, but this isn't the final solution. It's a bit like Apple's first iPhone. It was immensely popular, hugely desirable, but it wasn't cheap and it wasn't particularly good either. But over the years, they've improved on it. What made it so important and so desirable was the fact that it was first to the market, it was beautifully packaged and beautifully marketed. BMW i8 is just like that. It's the marketing and the packaging that make this car so desirable. And it is the packaging that is so awesome. It is fantastic. It is a beautiful, beautiful machine. It's got these supercar proportions in a sports car body. Low slung, two doors. Everywhere you stop, you are going to be fielded with questions about its power, its price, its top speed, what it's like to drive. It really is an occasion. And then you've got these doors. <laughs> these are the motoring equivalent of high heels. They're totally, totally impractical. Man, they look good. i8 is a little impractical it is a sports car you don't have a massive amount of range especially on the batteries and the fuel tank is a little small but really the range isn't bad for a sports car you're not going to get much storage space either though you can hardly call what's in the back a boot and the rear seats are seats by name only that's the only way that they resemble seats but this is an important car and it is a great drive it's a lovely drive. The handling's maybe not right on the money. That's just one of those little flaws. One of those that you can actually live with. It doesn't matter though. BMW has shown us that the future of the sports car is alive. It's not dying. We just need to let go of our preconceived notion that a sports car has to have a big, thirsty motor.